CBDC is important because it doesn't just provide housing. You know, they really have built an amazing team. Uh, all of us have very different strengths and we come together and create this type of synergy where we're able to really bring our best to the, to the properties and in turn the residents are able to give their best back to their communities. When I first got to Stony Brook, I got here about a month before the after school program ended. There were about six or seven kids a day that would come in. They would grab a snack and leave, two or three would stay. There were two shanty cardboard boxes filled with broken pencils, crumpled up paper, broken crowns. There was no middle school or high school program to speak of at all. It didn't exist. Basically the program was on its last leg. It really served no purpose to the community or the youth. So for me, when I see the kids here every day, engaged, doing their schoolwork, improving their grades, interacting with each other in a positive manner, it's, it makes a lot of the effort that I've put into it really rewarding. And because of that, you see in the community less crime, more parental engagement, less bullying. It's really, it's changed the whole culture of, of what happens here. Mr. Ryan has influenced me by pushing me and helping me tap into my full potential. If I'm not doing my best, he won't allow me to just settle. He will push me. Four days out of the week, he has somewhere to come to until six o'clock. So like you stay out of trouble and um, we do like report card checks. So we do, you're forced to be good in school. But yeah, so that's a good thing. When I go around this area of Fairfax County and I see what programs there are, I see that what we have is perhaps the best in the area. And I think that goes for all of the CPDC sites. And I think the staff at CPDC has done an incredible job of being supportive of the academic measures that we pursue, of um, grants and, and, and funding. Without that, I mean, that, the program wouldn't be able to operate the way it does. Um, and there's somebody here every week checking out the kids and making sure that they're, they're doing well, the program's running well, supporting it, volunteering. If this program didn't exist, you would have upwards of 70 kids with no place to go after school. Nothing to do, no positive influences. It, it would, it'd be very difficult for them to to keep doing what they've been doing and be successful as they have. I decided to create Next Phase because after a very successful run with a, a program that we called To The Top, had graduated almost 60 people from the program and they kept coming up to me and asking me, well, what's next? You know, you had us go through this wonderful program, we've opened up, we're, we're very vulnerable and we're ready to take ourselves on, but the program's over. And when I thought, why don't we create something unique for the women at Wheeler Terrace and see if we can pilot that there. When I first came in, there was no smiles on their faces. They were just like, oh Lord, here we go, another workshop. But when they actually caught on to the work, that we, the lessons that we were doing, it's like, oh my God, they got it and they're ready to take off. I decided to join Next Phase because um, it was very interesting in the beginning. It gave me more ambition. I'm getting ready to start college now. I'm getting ready to get my associate's degree in social work. Um, I now see that anything is possible. If you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. It has allowed me to open up to let people in to help me and to know that I'm not alone and I don't have to do things on my own. I know I still have a long way to go, but I'm taking it step by step and day by day. I'm praying more. <laughs> I'm getting out of my way. And like I said, I'm letting people in to help me now.